Hello everyone, it's me Uncle John. Today I am going to read chapter 9, S3 6008 Secret Garden, chapter 9 and 10. Magic. One of the strangest things about living in the world is that it is only now and that, that one is quite sure one is going to live forever and ever. It was like that with Colin when he first saw and heard and felt the springtime inside the four walls of a hidden garden. I've seen the spring now, said Colin, and I'm going to see the summer. I'm going to see everything grow here. I'm going to grow here myself. That thou will, said Dickon. Us will have thee walking about here and digging same as other folk afore long. And it was indeed on that very day that Colin stood for the first time. He threw off the blanket covering his legs and gripped the arms of his chair. The strength that he usually threw into his tantrums rushed through him in a new way. You can do it, Mary said over and over under her breath. Dickon held Colin's arm. Then Colin's thin legs were out and his thin feet were on the grass. Colin was standing upright, upright, as straight as an arrow and looking strangely tall, his head thrown back and his eyes flashing lightning. I can stand, he said in a new voice. Good answer, Dickon. 350번만 하면 돼, 이렇게. 350 times, okay. Colin drew himself up straighter than ever. I'm gonna walk to that tree, he said, pointing to one a few feet away from him. I can rest against it if I like. And when I want to sit down, I will sit down, but not before. He walked to the tree, and though Dickon held his arm, he was wonderfully steady. Everyone thinks I'm gonna die, said Colin, leaning against the tree to catch his breath. I'm not. Thou die, Dickon said, nothing of the sort. Thou hast got too much pluck in this. When I see it, Thee put, the, put thy legs on the ground in such a hurry. I knowed thou was all right. When the sun slipped over the edge of the garden wall and ended a strange, lovely afternoon for them, the Colin stood on his two feet, laughing. There was magic at work in the secret garden in the months that followed. At first, it seemed that green things would never cease pushing their way through the earth. Then the green thing began to show buzz, and the buzz began to unfurl and show color, every shade of blue, every shade of purple, every tint and hue of crimson. The seeds that Dickon and Mary had planted grew as if fairies had tended them, and the roses rising out of the grass, tangled around the tree trunks and hanging from the branches, climbing up the walls, spreading over them with long garlands falling in cascades. They came alive day by day. Colin saw it all, watching each change as it took place. Every morning he was brought out, and every hour of each day it didn't rain he spent in the garden. Even great days pleased him. He would lie on the grass, watching things growing, he said. But when the sun was shining, Colin walked along with the others. I wonder what the doctor will say when he sees how strong you are becoming, said Mary one day as she watched Colin digging. He won't say anything, Colin answered, because he will not be told. This is to be the biggest secret of all. No one is to know anything about it until I have grown so strong that I can walk and run like any other boy. I shall come here every day in my chair and I shall be taken back in it and then sometime when my father comes back to Miss Dwight, I shall walk into his study and say, here I am, I'm quite well, and I shall live to be a man. Colin had made himself believe that he was going to get well. And the thought that stimulated him more than any other was just imagining what his father would look like when he saw that he had a son who was as straight as other father's sons. Each day, he did grow stronger, and each day, he could walk more steadily and cover more ground. One morning, Dickon showed him some exercises he had learned. Colin watched them with widening eyes. He could do a few while. 
he could do a few while he was sitting down. Soon he did a few gently while he stood up on his feet. Mary began to do them also. From the time on, the exercises became a part of each day. At first, uh, the robin watched Mary and Colin anxiously, worried that the strange movements might mean that they were preparing to pounce as cats do. But then he remembered that when he himself had been made to learn to fly by his parents, he had done so much the same sort of things. He had taken short flights of a few yards and then had been obliged to rest. So it's it occurred to him that this boy was learning to fly, or rather to walk, and it seemed to be no time at all before the boy, who had once looked so frail and awkward, was walking and running about just like his two companions. Mary, Dickon, Colin cried out, one afternoon, just look at me. Dropping his trowel, he stood upright and stretched himself to his tallest height. Color glowed in his face, and his eyes widened with joyfulness. Mary and Dickon stopped their weeding and looked at him. Do you remember that first afternoon you brought me in here? He asked. Dickon was looking at him very hard. Aye, that we do, he answered. Mary looked hard too, but she said nothing. Just this minute, said Colin, all at once I remembered it myself. When I looked at my hand, digging with the trowel, and I had to stand up on my feet to see if it was real, and it's real, I'm well, I'm well. Aye, the thou, thou art, said Dickon. I'm well, said Colin again. I shall live forever and ever. And then his face took on quite a wistful expression. I wish my father would come home, he said. I want to tell him myself. I'm always thinking about it. I wish, I wish my father could see me and my mother. Hey, lad said Dickon softly. Thy mother is in this here, Betty Garden. I do believe she couldn't keep out of it. And thy father, he must come back to thee. He must. Oh, the end.